Warning. The following podcast contains two morons talking about sophisticated subject matter, like ninus and hoo-hahs. Also, a few whoopsie-daisies and at least one house or ante. If you don't have a strong stomach, you know where the door is. Right. On with the shenanigans, then. The podcast which you are about to hear is an account of the tragedy which befell two washed-up losers. In particular, Court Psyops and his immature co-host, Matt. It was all the more tragic in that they were uncultured morons. But had they lived very, very full lives, they could not have expected nor would they have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they were to see each week. For them, an idiotic podcast show became a nightmare. The events of each week were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history, Cinema Psyops with Court and Matt. What is Psyops? Psyops for psychological operations is very simply the art of influencing how people feel and think and ultimately how they behave and what they do. You don't have to defeat the enemy on the battlefield. It's better if you can convince the enemy to do what you want him to do without having to fight him. And that's really the intent behind Psyops, to convince people to do what you want them to do. So how does Psyops fit into what's happening now? The two points I'd like to make with you and the audience is that first and foremost, Psyops saves lives. The second thing I'd like to say, a lot of people have misconception about PSYOP. They think it's something deviant and brainwashing. You say you don't know exactly what's going on right now, but we do know that there are some PSYOPs going on, right? Ma'am, I don't know. Cinema Psyops. And I believe with all of my heart that it is a contributing factor to our juvenile delinquency of today. Why I believe that is because I know how it feels. I know what it does to you. Cinema Psyops. They think it's something devious and brainwashing. the 297th consecutive week of Cinema Psyop, the podcast that is hollering at you like we love Quentin Tarantino's obsession with feet, but we, we really don't. I'm your host, Court, and joining me via a uplink we like to call Skype here in this studio is my co-host, Matt! Yeah, I mean, the whole feet thing is just, it's its gotten to be a lot lately with them. Like, a lot, a lot. And not only that, he's starting to look more and more like somebody who's way too into feet. Not to king chain, but I just did. <laughs> more Quentin Tarantino shame. We got the okay yeah. from the one listener that we know will stick with us. Okay, cool. All right, good. <laughs> yeah, our so man... We can, we can- Fuck that guy. <laughs> no, no. Our, our man in the field, Robert, has uh, sworn fealty for us on this. Um, okay. We're allowed to talk as much shit as we want on Christopher Nolan and Quentin Tarantino, and Robert will stand by us, so we will always have at least Robert. Well, I like Christopher Nolan, though. I mean, I don't... Oh, fuck off. <laughs> but The Dark Knight was a legitimate great movie. <laughs> All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. <laughs> I'm just going to fucking stop right now because no. All right. What? Really? No? All uh, right. Fine. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not saying I dislike the Dark Knight. I'm just, I'm not oh. going, I'm not getting baited in this. I'm not doing it. I know me. Uh, I know where I'm about to go. You and know I where you're about it. to go with Christopher Nolan? You just yeah. can't? Yeah, I just, I fucking feel it. So I'm just going to, I'm going to just got to, I'm going to cut it, cut it off right now. I just, I got to fucking do it. So, okay, uh, okay. Right. Lady Snowblood 2, the, the sequel, uh, song of, <laughs> love song of vengeance. Yes. 1974. Love song of vengeance. So, what? 1974. So, released yep. a year after it. I don't know if they were filmed back to back or not. I didn't do the research on that. I have always just enjoyed these films and loved them for what they were. Yes. That's always been my thing. Now, it's a good thing to do. I do not know also if this had a manga prior to this or if it's the movie's finally going off on its own. Um, I honestly cannot tell you. I didn't look that up either. Um, I would assume if mangas are anything like comic books, the characters 
characters never fully die and there's always a sequel. I mean, yeah, it seems that way. <laughs> I mean, mangas are pretty much, you know, I would say it's the same, I guess. I mean, they're they're just read backwards compared to what the standard American comic that you'd be used to, or English language comic, I should say, reads. Did yeah. you ever, have you ever actually seen a manga before? Like, have you like gone to a comic book shop and seen one where they legit read backwards and everything? No, I've, I've not. No, I haven't. I've, I've never gotten into manga. Oh, so. well, I, I just, I there was something that somebody said to me once because it was never really like, I think the closest I got to reading actual manga, and it's not a slight on it, it's just, this is just never yeah. really crossed my path. Yeah, I get you. You know what I mean? That's the same thing with me. Like, I have nothing against it. I just never never gotten a chance to get, really get into it. Right. So the closest I had always gotten to it was being at a comic book shop and somebody told me that, you know, because it, I think the reading, uh, the Japanese language is written from right to left. So the, oh. the manga's turn backwards. Oh, wow. From what That's we are used to, from what I understand. And I didn't know that that was a thing, but there's actually some that they print them in English still. All the language is English, but they're printed exactly as they would be printed over there. And they, they actually do, in fact, the story continuity goes the, the pages backwards to what we're used to or right ah. to left, which is a really unique experience. Now, like I said, I've never really like fully read one. I've just kind of like thumbed through and, yeah. and sort of like got into That's a couple more than of me. panels. I've never even thumbed through. I, I, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I sort of got into a couple of panels and stuff. And after a while, it's not even really a thing. It's not that big yeah. of a fucking deal to you. But there's something tactile and different about reading it backwards to how you're normally used to that makes you think about it just a little bit more when you are trying to read. Like Again, just from the few panels and a couple pages I thumbed through and stuff, what I'm commenting on here. But anyway, if those comics are anything like the good old-fashioned USA comics I'm used to, or English language comics, I should say, that I'm used to, then that's the only real difference that I could see in the sampling that I have taken, is what I'm getting yeah. at, is yeah, one gotcha. reads backwards compared to the other. And depending upon which one you're used to reading more of, the other is the one that reads backwards to you. Right? <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> All about perspective on what's forwards and what's backwards. Pretty much, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me today, but Lady Snowblood 2, Love Song of Vengeance. Now, this is a more politicized tale than the last one. They had political underpinnings and societal commentary and a little social satire in the last film. And they yeah. have completely abandoned all pretense of any kind of like... You want anarchy. Fuck capitalism. <laughs> the, yeah, but they've completely abandoned sort of any semblance of a hidden message or a subtle message or some kind of a, like overtone. Yeah, no, it's right up in your face. They went from subtext to straight up text with the things yeah. that were political in the last one. Now, I can see where if you're just coming here to see a lady get smattered in blood because she's destroying a ton of dudes with a sword, watching ladies cut dudes into shreds is a thing I'm into. <laughs> like, if that's what you're coming to this movie for, you're probably not your bag. No. There's significantly less of that. It's and, just that but, it's destroying it, but my the movie can, boner, okay? <laughs> the movie can fake you out because it begins and you think you're right into the in for just a fucking violent time. And, and then, it, yeah, it gets you. Now, having said that, I don't enjoy it any less because of that. But I will oh. say that watching it now to do it for the show, I appreciated the film more for what it is than what I expected it to be whenever I experienced it for the very first time. It's just that it's destroying yeah. my bloodshed boner, okay? Well, if that lasts more than four hours. <laughs> oh, you want to call back? Okay. If your bloodshed yeah, yeah. boner lasts more than four hours, see a doctor. You really should see a doctor. I mean, that is... That is just smart thinking. This is the one me. clip I want a doctor up to have you actually say the word doctor at the end proper. <laughs> See a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, like I said, this film is far more intriguing. This is more of a discussion, more of a um, geopolitical topic, um, make you think about things and your place in society. Uh, open commentary on end stage capitalism, I would say, yeah. of a film. Oh, Oh, yeah. Which is so fucking pertinent for right now that I didn't even realize whatever I very much was so, going to be. Uh, how how a lot of this is being talked about. Yeah. So yeah. We're gonna have to do this we're, we're gonna have to do our very best to keep it to just broad terms of what is wrong yeah, with our society yeah, then and now. <laughs> yeah, we can't we can't go too crazy here. <laughs> But the thing is, it will not take very much work for us to allude to broadly gestures to the world around him. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, this is <laughs> a lot of stuff going on right now that should be taken in with this movie. Lots of let's go to. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I think we're going to have an excellent discussion here. I don't think we're going to probably get bogged down too much. If the last movie is any judge, I yeah. th- think most of the stuff we're just going to kind of talk over in broad terms and then give our impressions of the film, which is what I'm hoping for. If it doesn't turn out that way, oh fucking well, here's yeah. the Legion Patreon ad. This will keep you quiet. <laughs> oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You call me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legionpodcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. What's with all the industrial music? I thought, you know, you were going to try and go for more traditional music. Ah, yeah. but in the first film, there was a more traditional soundtrack to everything that was happening. This film, I would submit to you, is much more experimental. It has a lot of uh, theremin sounding instrumentation and some synthesizers and things like that. And is actually pretty fucking sweet. So I'm trying to match that as best I could with that feeling. Wow, that's what I'm. Go. That's what I'm trying to do here right now. It has nothing to do with the fact that you may have lightly joked that I was culturally appropriating and I panicked and felt that everyone would think it was that and therefore I have to play something completely different this week and hope that everything will be okay. Wow. Way to overcompensate. Lady Snowblood 2! Alright. First 20 minutes. We uh, cut right in. Yuki is at the grave of her mother and now the priest as well. So uh, in between the last movie and this one, the priest has uh, passed away as well. Uh, She is heartbroken. And also her vengeance is done. She doesn't really know where to go forward. You can almost see just a sadness in her because there's no more purpose. What uh, is your over under on how much of this weeping is from the lost man who raised her and how much of it is she has no more vengeance to be sought? Uh, I think 50-50. You're going to say 50-50? Yeah. I'm thinking more 75-25. Uh, vengeance to priest? Or... Yeah, yeah. I think she's she's got a vengeance boner that will not quit. Uh, vengeance wide on that will not quit. It's possible. She could be fully wet for vengeance right now. God, um, that's so fucking hot. That's a metal album. Fully wet for vengeance. <laughs> fully wet for... You're welcome. <laughs> that's amazing. Thank you. You're welcome, internet. 
<laughs> have that. <laughs> you have that on me. Um, she is then attacked by a group of, of what looks to be officials. Um, as she simply walks past them, killing them all, slicing and fucking dicing, which is just fucking fun to watch. And she's not really doing any work for it, uh, which tells me these guys are nothing but fucking plebs. And but, it's fucking hilarious to me. And it also portrays her character as over it. She's done. Yeah. She's bored with this. She can't fight anymore. She doesn't know why she's even doing this. She really has literally no purpose. It's this scene that sets me at 7525. Uh, yeah, I mean, that could be very true. Because when she gets um, up and walks away, she's not crying, and it's not like she's focusing in on our grief. No, but she's it, very depressed. Yeah, she's down, she's out, and she just wants something to kill and a reason to kill it. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Why not? Fuck it. Let's kill everything. So we find out it's September 1905. Clip. Uh, we see... The, what? Just, oh, the kill it thing? Okay. Uh... <laughs> It's uh, the war is over and 370,000 Japanese soldiers have given their lives for capitalism. But inflation has now reached dangerous levels. The poor are still very, very poor. And he said, uh, uh, but uh, then it also ends, but a woman, she cannot continue her uh, her road, or, or, but a woman continues her road of carnage, Lady Snowblood. So it must be an article written by somebody else. So there you go. Um, lots of lots of good stuff happening here. How much of <laughs> you really wish that this was in a language that our audience could understand so you could just clip it? I would love to have clipped that. That more than even the first movie, I wanted to clip that. <laughs> I was like, man, that's a that's a lot of good information right there. That could be something that people would like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to convey this myself because it's a lot of work. That's a lot of writing for me. So I'm going to oversimplify everything and be done with it. So like so, war's okay. over, uh, capitalism still good. Japan sort of won. Inflation. So capitalism fucking... isn't still good. It's just capitalism is still there. Capitalism and... is still winning, but inflation is kind of fucked. Hi. People are yeah. suffering and it's the war's fault. That seems like it went on forever and would never end. That doesn't yep, sound... It anything like what's currently happening around the world at all no no nothing like that's uh even i don't even know why you would bring anything like that up why i mean are you just an asshole now or <laughs> yes okay uh anyway she fights and kills more police officers it escapes on a horse that was ridden on by the sheriff you could tell and she just kind of pushed him right off or threw something at him so he fell off of it I thought she um, threw the umbrella at him because didn't she stop to pick it up yes. right before she hopped on the no, horse? No, no. She threw uh, another guy's sword at him. Yes, that's yeah, what she, it was. She, yeah, she threw another guy's sword at him. So That would make um, me drop down, too. Yeah, yeah, right? Um, anyway, as she's going through the woods, she actually gets snagged into a bear trap. And we see it's not a trap for her. It was just a trap for animals. And a hunter comes along her. Uh, with her and helps freeze her. And after resting for a while, because he says, you need to rest and, and healing, helping her heal up, she walks on down to the beach and she is again surrounded by police. She keeps slicing and dicing and then she kind of sees the hunter and realizes it's all over. She throws her sword away and she gives up. She is tried for the murders uh, that she has committed and she is sent to the same prison that she was born in. On the day of her execution, she is then rescued by a bunch of masked men and taken away. So a bunch of masked men killed a bunch of police and uh, and, and got her out of there so that uh, she wouldn't, uh, you know, go on the murder train. Um, Like, you know, so she can continue her own murder train. <laughs> she's hopping off of the execution train and she's immediately been diverted to the path of the murder um, train for herself. I should the say. murder train. Yeah, yeah, the assassination train. There we go. Well, they take her to a man uh, who knows her entire story. Uh, he says who he is. You know, he's that mysterious bad guy. Who, who he is doesn't matter. He wants her to fight again. And he sends her on a mission to watch over a popular anarchist. And to watch him for a month and then retrieve a document from him. A very important document. And that ends our first 20 minutes. Kind so, of a strange opening. We start with a little bit of malaise, a little very, bit of sadness, and then yep. we sort of immediately go into like this her half assing it fight scene where it's clear she just doesn't even give a shit. I think but she's her half assing it is better than any like 
can still best 20 men. Right. Like, I think she's just, like, not even trying because she just wants someone to get lucky and kill yeah. her. Like, she doesn't want to live. It doesn't seem like at the beginning of this. Well, and, and I think she wants to live and she doesn't want to live. She's so, she's 50 50 conflicted. So she gives 50 50 on, you know, her a- a- attempts to actually try to defend herself, which that just happens to be good enough to beat all the men in, you know, in this police hovel. <gasps> and I believe that she gives up. Not because she thinks she can't defeat all of these police, because I'm positive that she can. It's mm-hmm. just that having the hunter help her and be kind, if they find out that the hunter helped her, he yeah. could be in serious shit too. So I think she just gives herself up to protect him. I think she it actually- was definitely that. She, yeah. Yes. It's like a sense of honor thing that, that she had yeah. for that, for doing that. I believe like, that that's I, the case. She's like, I definitely would have been jacked up if it hadn't been for him. So, but you know, I, I, I gotta, I gotta help cover for him. So yeah, because yeah, that's even exactly if- why. Cause she would have killed all the guys on that beach. Right, but then he would have somehow been questioned because he's been around yeah. there and he's trapping and they would have somehow found yeah, out. Because she, that she sheriff would have ran away. He would have retreated before all his men were killed from her. And then, yeah, probably would have found the the hunter and would have taken him down. Yeah, I, I totally believe that's the case. So it's a very interesting setup. She gets arrested. She goes to jail. She gets broken out. That's all pretty standard, like, Rambo, we need to get you out of lockup for this next movie but, kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Like, I you, mean, you, plenty I, of action heroes have had this happen before. I'm sure there's at least one of the three musketeers that's had to have been busted out this way. Yeah. I mean, and, I, you know, you got to be honest, when she ended up in the prison, she grew up, and I'm like, oh, my God, is, is Lady Snow Go- Blood going to become a, a prison movie all of a sudden where she's, like, whooping ass at a prison? And I was kind of excited by that. <laughs> Right, but like some of the not. wives and or lovers of some of the people that she has killed would be in this yeah. prison, possibly. And it's like defending her own life and the this love song of vengeance would be her trying to stay alive in a woman's prison. Well, you know what I also thought was, holy shit, what if like this was all part of her plan to actually get caught and to now extract vengeance on all the men who took advantage of her mother in prison? <laughs> Wow, yeah, that, that could have been awesome, too. I went there real quick, and I'm like, oh, this is going to get real fucking weird. And then, yeah, she got busted out. I'm like, ah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the route we're going to go. We're going to turn her into double O Samurai. All right, let's yeah. do this. All right, fine. Let's let's have some fun. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> All right, movie. You're not going to give me the sleazy women in prison samurai fighting I want. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to give me the seeking vengeance on the guards revenge movie that Matt wants. I yeah. guess we'll watch the government assassin for higher movie you're yeah. trying to give us okay that's All fine right. i we'll, mean what are you, what are you gonna do let's do this oh. movie yeah <laughs> so we start out the next 20 minutes uh she gets access to this guy's place um and she's now showing herself as a maid uh we get a bunch of times where she's looking around cleaning she watches him you know and then looks for stuff and she finds a lot of torn pics of this guy's wife and and uh, you know and it looks like a marriage picture wedding pictures but the head of the man is torn off in all these pictures but his wife's in there then she sees you know the dude and his wife getting down and boning which is uh, in and and a lot of foot action in this one the dude's just fucking all over this girl's foot feet man yeah so it's like did Tarantino, Tarantino definitely stole from these movies, including his personal life. Dude, what if this movie is what helped him awaken to the fact that he was in defeat? Yeah, I mean, maybe. Why, why not? I mean, there is a movie that awakened me to the fact that I'm into women in prison movies. So, you know. Yeah. That's a possibility, yeah. right? <laughs> I agree. I totally agree. Yeah. Um, but, uh, there is actual nudity. You get to see boobs. This is very yeah. consensual sex, uh, enthusiastically very, so it's consenting a thank you movie. sex. Yeah, this scene is a she, thank I you mean, movie. She's like, I want your, you know, she wanted to have his babies. So, <laughs> yeah, they were throwing down and they were getting real romantic yeah. about it. So, this is that definitely shit was a thank real, you movie. man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, movie. Yeah. Thank uh, you for this very lovely, consensual, and very um, foot, married couple having sex, man. Very foot centric. <laughs> Uh, love scene thank you movie yeah, yeah let let's win let's win together people uh <laughs> so then the um then one night he comes back uh drunk from being out at the bar and uh, she grabs him some water and when she's been over he actually grabs her ass and i'm like dude you are lucky you're not drawing back a bloody fucking stump right now 
Right. She You're was feeling lucky. extremely is generous. On a mission. Yeah, she's yes. feeling extremely generous because that grab was not cool. No, that was uh that was an uncool grab. That was a bad touch. Bad touch, bad anarchist, bad. That is um, assault, you fucking pig. Yeah. Don't don't ever do that again. <laughs> and uh let's see here. Okay, so then the next day, he takes her, um, and they walk, and they, they're being followed by police, but they're able to lose him. And he takes her to this pet cemetery, and he says, this is where all his comrades were buried after the secret police murdered him. Um, and then uh, she asked why, you know, why did you bring me here? And he said, for your prayers. And then he said, but also, uh, that he tells her he knows all about her, that she is Lady Snowblood. And he knows all about her mission, seen her looking around, and he said, this is where I keep this document you're looking for and it's in one of the tombstones for lack of a better word can we just talk about the pet cemetery real quick yeah Uh, first of all i don't want to be buried in a pet cemetery i don't want to live my life again uh the reason his comrades are buried there is because it's reserved for basically anything that isn't believed to have a soul and because they are insurrectionist type uh, anarchist wanting to overthrow or do something about the government they are declared to be soulless because of their beliefs and therefore are buried where you would bury various animals it's just basically an awful pit o f f a l awful not that kind of awful but uh yeah it, the tombstone markings are just so close together like it's basically just like a giant pit right then they cover it over uh-huh. and then leave markers for all the things that are buried there is yeah. that what's going on i mean it's just really uh, like are all those individual prayers for the dead because they're all buried so close together it's a I very so. disturbing thing to see and just have all these questions about but the fact that they are not even considered human beings, so they're buried in a place because they don't have souls now. And they're just buried among essentially vermin that are killed and then some pets. Yeah. That's awful. But they're they're viewed very low. Yeah. That, yeah, it is awful. I'm so glad that things have changed, Matt. They're, they haven't, Court. Why why do why do you have to do this? <laughs> no, in twenty twenty one, Matt, I am so glad that things are better. That for pets? It, that people are getting along and not being buried yeah. with pets. Yeah. Well now some people are buried with their pets, but that's by choice. <laughs> No, seeing this shit and the way that these people are treated and seeing that yeah. none of it has changed and then basically seeing it all boil down to that there has been no warfare except class warfare all along, that all governments, all all fucking states of human beings have always been class warfare. There's the yeah. exploited and the exploiters, and that's all that there is. It's never fucking changed. Was It's super depressing to see it and then realize that while watching the film. It's the way it's been since the dawn of time. How sad is that? Yeah, oh, I need a since, fucking hug, since, man. <laughs> since anything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not fun to realize that nothing's ever changed ever. We've just gotten better at killing one another. Yep, fucking humanity. Yeah, it's a real dog and pony show. Then they walk, and he tells the story of a young man who lived uh, really horribly. I mean, his life was just terrible because they, he had to work the heavy labor jobs. They didn't never paid him enough for anything. Um, you know, everything was just fucking terrible. And that he got so mad he blew up a building. Well, the police found him, and they tortured him, and then we see images of him being tortured, which was fucking horrific. And A little too just, realistic for my yeah. taste, honestly. Like, I was, like, kind Same. of concerned, like, did they just show me actual footage of people that were tortured? Yeah, what I was just that? like, oof, man, they got, these guys got to really settle it down, man. I'm uh, not handling this well. Yeah, uh, <laughs> either this was some really well-done single-shot makeup, and they framed it and yeah. did it that well, or did. this was actually actual like injury like fucking photography that they just showed us because it was fucking grody oh yeah i mean it was really fucking bad (laughs) so uh anyway uh so the guy makes up the story that it was anarchist because he wants to get done being fucking tortured um and uh so then they find all the this guy's comrades and kill him all he's the only one that's left alive because he was actually in his country house trying to uh fucking you know get better uh he was uh, sick yeah yeah he said he was sick so it's like holy shit man how sick can you be 
Um, and so, uh, he kind of, he's very sad about that. Very tortured. Um, and then they, uh, they, uh, decide they start walking back to his home, but they, you can see he's being watched. And so somebody heard everything that was happening there. The bad guys are now informed of her treachery and they say they will stop him from making the speech and reading this document that will cause riots and overthrow the government. And they'll use the woman as you know, as, as, as this plan B. So, uh, the next day, those two, the anarchist and Yuki are going for a meeting and the anarchist gives Yuki uh, the document and says to give it, if anything happens to him, to give it to a doctor that's in one of the slums. Um, and then that ends, uh, that 20 minutes. It's kind of all self-explanatory. What kind of happened? All right. So this um, is another twist, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, everything's like we yeah to- so, so we already come out with the anarchist knew this whole time who she was and now she's kind of flipping into being a double agent right it seems that way i think because her vengeance were against men who had dishonor against honorable people so she's not going to fight for other dishonorable people all right so part of the things that she was sent for vengeance with her mother wasn't just what happened to her family it's what these people did to their entire village the thing that happened to their entire village has been done to the entire country by the government that is forcing her upon penalty of death to do its bit yeah, so obviously she was There's no choice. She, she doesn't and she doesn't care about dying. No, there so is there is no she's choice gonna, in this. She's, she's gonna do what's right. Yeah, there's absolutely no choice in this. She has actually, I believe, in the choice that she makes here, somewhat turned away from her path of damnation. Yeah. Because this is a righteous cause for her. And it kind of doesn't go the way she wants it to because of that, I think. Because that's yeah. not what she's built for. No, no, she's not built for all this uh good stuff (laughs) or she's not built to care about people or at least she wasn't supposed to be right she's an anti-hero she can't drop the anti all that easily no um but it happens and that's why this whole movie really doesn't end well for her well let's find out yeah in the next 20 minutes on their way, the police stop them. They're going to arrest him because uh, he's with her, who she is also a fugitive. Well, she escapes uh, and runs away uh, after they kind of start taking him. He tells her to run. She's getting ready to murder everyone, but I don't even think she could have taken them all. Uh, as uh, they as she runs, she gets shot twice, or no, once. I'm sorry. She gets shot, though, falls off a bridge into the water. Um, then we get an overview that there are three slums in Tokyo, um, including the one we're looking at right now, where these slums are mainly free from police. They, you know, uh, they're filled with the poor, undesirable outcasts. Wait, I, I got they, it. I got it. I got it. Uh-huh. All right. Move back in time to just after the war in Japan. But the neighborhood and the people that are in the neighborhood are essentially this. This is Paul Kersey's neighborhood in Death Wish 3, folks. That's what's yes. going on in this area. It's, That's exactly it. Yeah. It's also like the the stacks in Judge Dredd, where like literally any crime could be going on. And the, the fact that someone may or may not be there because they're so overworked and there's so few people trying to stop the chaos. Yeah. Like almost that, every... Every movie about government change or anything like that has a big city where it's the rich and then it's the area for the poor and the undesirable. Almost everywhere in the world in our in current reality is like that. Yeah, that's also true. Um, that's that's why they call it gentrifying some areas. <laughs> because people do that. Um so, um, we cut in these three dudes, they're talking about a new scam they kind of want to pull, things they're going to do, and then all of a sudden Yuki shows up, asking me to be taken to the doctor. She's bloody, barely conscious, and she needs to be taken to that Dr. Tungawa. Well, she wakes up, she's in the, she passes out, she wakes up, she's in the clinic. She meets the doctor and tells him that the anarchist has been arrested. Uh, the, uh, the doctor says, well, he kind of knew what he was getting into with this life. He's made preparations and you need to rest anyway. Um, then, uh, the doctor then walks over to the same group of guys who, you know, Yuki met in, uh, when she first got into that village or that slum and they are looking over the document and they agree that they could bring down the government with this document however they could also blackmail the government with this document and get some cash money 
So, you know, get some good stuff out of this. Yeah, they're trying to decide whether or not they want to do the right thing or if they want to make a quick buck, which yeah. has nothing like what would happen today. No one no. would hold out for a book deal instead of doing the right thing to try and stop someone from running government horribly and abusing everyone around them. No one would just wait and hold out for a book deal, Matt. They would stop them like what these guys are arguing should be done. Speaking of that, I have the special document that could have brought us world peace, but instead, buy my book for 19 19- <laughs> All on the Cinema Psyop Patreon app. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one would do that now. <laughs> Um, so, uh, well, we see the anarchists, we cut to the anarchist from Suey, and he is tortured and beaten in front of his wife. This is pretty hardcore, too. Yeah, but this, this is, is pretty this, uncomfortable. But at least it's definitely makeup, right? Yeah, oh, I mean, it's definitely makeup, but it's still uncomfortable. Do you think the makeup in this scene looks good enough to make you think that the photos were them doing just another job or like a test makeup job that they then used in the movie? I think so. Okay. So I feel more comfortable about it because, yeah, the more we talked about it, the more the makeup's really fucking good like he really looks like he was beaten and cut and there's spots where like they stop beating him and it looks like they cut open a they like lanced a boil from all the blood coming out so they could beat him some more and make it swell back up right jesus christ i mean they really did a really good job on this (laughs) yeah it's pretty fucking grody my man they spent the money on some good makeup in this yep um so, uh, and, and of course, he tells his wife to run home, and so she leaves, and she runs right to the doctor. Um, we find out this doctor's Rinsui's brother, and he's had some sort of relationship with her in the past, and he feels some sort of way about both of them, in that they can both get the fuck out. Um... <laughs> I mean, am I wrong? <laughs> I mean, like you're, you're you're summing it up pretty pretty well. I mean, it's, I can't. I'm not arguing with it. It's just that I didn't realize that that's exactly how I needed to hear it stated. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he was, uh, he is not listening to her. He does not like her and he wants her to get the fuck away from him. We see Yuki's kind of listening to them as she's laying down and she sees a knife and she picks it up, looks at the ceiling. She throws it into the ceiling. All of a sudden see blood coming down. Well, up on the roof, there was one of the bad guys listening in on all this stuff. Well, he falls off and all the peeps in the slum start noticing, we don't recognize this guy from anywhere. So they chase him. Well, they catch him. They tie him up to a pole in the town and they start torturing him for info and this is fucking grody holy fuck this is hardcore too yeah if you're into feet and torture this is the film for you yeah really no shit i mean it is hard fucking core shit the and, guy uh, just holding that same grimace while they're carving yeah. him up too in the face and, and shit oh no no how smart the bad guys were this is the one particular bad guy who can't talk he was the leader who saved yuki from the execution part and he couldn't talk then yeah so there's so, he's not gonna say anything so literally. he can't say anything because he can't talk anyway Right, but he also Uh, won't fucking break and try and show them that he can't talk. No, he's just sitting there like, fuck you and fuck everyone. I'll take this. That's the part that impresses me. That fuck you look and that grimace on his fucking face the entire time they're carving him up and shit. They carve up his face, dude. Over an old scar that they caused already. Oh, yeah. They cut open a fucking bruise and let it bleed out, which really fucking hurts, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I would think so. I, I mean, it doesn't feel good. I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm assuming that's not a happy, happy, fun time for anyone. And he's just fucking sitting there, grimacing at yeah, them like it's just nothing. Like, Fuck you! Yeah, yeah. Jesus that's Christ! A, that's a that's a. He might be a bad guy, but he's a tough son of a bitch. He's not exactly <laughs> the kind of bad guy you want to be dealing with at all. No, no, not at all. Um, that night they have one guard watching him, and that guard seems pretty drunk and falling asleep. So not exactly the guard you want to have out there. Well, <laughs> unless you're having them take care of an Epstein. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh huh. Of course. Uh, by the way, this is brought to you by Epstein didn't kill himself. So anyway, um, Yuki is kind of walking around town, the village or the slum, and she hears noises. She goes to check, and she finds the guard dead, and that the guy who held captain cut off his own hand from the shackle to escape. So that's pretty fucking hardcore. Yep. That's that's some stuff right there. 
that you're not going to get past. He has looked upon his field where his fucks are grown and found that it is barren. <laughs> yes, he did. Holy shit. Um, that's, that's not something you come back from. That shit doesn't grow no. back. That's that's intense. No, that shit, that's, he's not Swamp Thing. That don't mean growing back because it's sunlight. <laughs> there's no Adrian Barbeau to make things better for him at the end no, of the day. No, no, there's nothing. So... Well, then the next day, Ransui, the anarchist, is actually thrown out from a cart back onto his home property. He comes to his wife in terrible shape. Uh, sores all over him and all that. Well, she gets him to his brother, the doctor. He sees him, picks him up, tells everyone to stay away, and throws him in a shed and locks it. He tells Yuki that they must have injected him with the plague. Uh, he tells her that he's not going to make it. He's definitely going to die. Well, the wife is very despondent. She gets up and leaves. She walks up to the police chief and starts hugging up on him. And he's like, what the hell? As she takes out her hairpin and stabs it right in the fucking eye. Ocular penetration. Holy fuck. That that was nasty shit. That was yeah. hardcore. That wasn't like Fulci level. The, the makeup no. effect didn't quite work as well. But still, like from just out of nowhere, no warning. The shock factor alone was like, yeah. holy fuck. Ooh. She knows what happened. When, as soon as she found out it was plagued, she wanted to give it right yep. back to him. And then oh, just yeah. to make sure, she fucking ocular penetrates him with her Ooh. hairpin. That's got to hurt. Yeah. Well, as he holds her, other guards come up and continuously stab her with their swords, killing her. Uh, so the wife then dies. That was fucking brutal, too. Yep. And that actually ends that 20 minutes, and we are heading into the final... 30. Would you say that this is all just refrigerating these people to put Yuki on the path back for vengeance where she's no longer fighting specifically to do the right thing now? She's going to start doing the wrong... Well, the, the right thing is to kill these people, but for the wrong reason is just for revenge. Do you think that's why they did it this way? I think so. I think so, too, because otherwise she is in the just cause and then she is now on the path of righteousness, more or less. Yes. If you want to look it's at campy. the... Yeah, she needs to be on the path of vengeance, so now she's back on yeah. the damnation and i think things start to go a little better for her now because either way she wants to end it because she's done this is just another yeah. vengeance quest and if she dies trying to do this one cool <laughs> you yeah <know>? exactly <laughs> <laughs> Um, heading into the final 20 minutes, um, some guys find her, the wife's body. Um, then we cut to Rensui is in terrible shape and he dies as Yuki watches and his, yeah, Rensui's brother's hanging with him the whole time in that room, uh, which comes to bite everyone here because... Uh, during the funeral, uh, where they're both laying in a boat, they're going to get ready to send them out to sea, the husband and wife. The bro just pretty much roasts them both. Roasts them. It's like fucking roasting them. Um, and apparently, they, the, the doctor, was married to her. And when he was off at war, she hooked up with his brother. So yeah, yeah, the doctor may have a reason for not liking them at all. Not even a little. Yeah. I don't... Yeah, that's an unforgivable curse right there. <laughs> that uh, should land you right in Azkaban. Also, it makes Christmases really awkward with the family. Right? <laughs> So, um, anyway, he starts not looking well himself and falling down and coughing. Um, he says he will not complete what his brother started. He'll do it his own way. And, uh, he is definitely sick. And we see him locked away in that shed, uh, with the plague himself. But writing out, not writing out, but dictating the ransom note to Yuki. Um, he wants 130,000 yen and, like, grain and stuff for the, the, the slum. Um, so, uh, Yuki then meets with all the bad guys and gives the demands. That bad guy's like, ha, I know where the doctor is. I know where the document is. We'll just, we could kill him and take you out. And then she's like, you could, but then someone's going to have to go after him and touch him. He has that plague. And she goes, hell, I may have it. Now everyone's scared. And the guy, bad guy says, okay, okay, I'll need some time to get all that together. And Yuki says, fine. And they make her wait in that, in that house. Well, then the emperor is there. The emperor has been involved in all this from the start. And he says, we should just pay it. It's $130,000. It's nothing. We're fine. But the main bad guys, like you can tell, he's the we don't negotiate with terrorists type of dude. So he's he doesn't want to. Uh, he hates the idea of anybody winning. 
but him uh, or anybody getting over on him. Like, none of that should happen. He's um, he considers himself a constant winner and that yeah. the deals are always in his favor and no one can ever look down on him. And it doesn't matter that these people are all dying because as long as he looks good and he's comfortable and rich, good yeah. thing that would never happen nowadays, right? Where a plague would just go rampant and no one does anything to stop it. Why, why do you have to do that, man? <laughs> Why you, why you gotta make me feel bad about myself <laughs> about what's happening with the world <laughs> I said broadly gestures to the world around him at the beginning of the show my man <laughs> I know it just fucking hurts <laughs> fucking, fucking shit hurts man this is where my mind was going when I was watching it man I'm just I'm yeah. just laying it out for everybody this is the stuff that I was thinking about that the more things change the more they stay exactly the fucking same oh yeah big time well, anyway, um, they, the main bad guy says, you know what? We're not going to pay him shit. We're going to burn down the slums. So as Yuki waits in this mansion, the slums are burned down by everyone. The Doc's men are all murdered. Uh, the Doc gets out of his shed and starts walking through the fire very sick. Well, while Yuki is waiting, she looks at a mirror and she launches something through it, much like the first movie, and it shows a whole nother room. Uh, some guards come to get her, and she goes into that room, and she slices and fucking dices her way through those assholes. She's then surrounded by the sheriff and his men. He's got a shotgun, and he starts shooting shit. But she's able to throw something, and it takes out his other eye. Now blind, he just starts shooting his own men. She then is able to take his gun and kills him. With his own gun. While he's blinded. Holy fuck. That was awesome. Fuck all of y'all. You had to wait so fucking long for this sequence. But oh, then but it was so she worth it. samurais her way out of gunshots. In a yeah. way that's completely believable for you. Like she yeah. directs the gunshots and everything. And it's pretty fucking incredible. Oh, dude, it is great. It is such a good watch. Yeah, so um, those of you that are here for two things, watching yeah. ladies cut dudes into shreds is a thing I'm into. <laughs> and then also <laughs> just, you know, you want the death and it's there. Th those two things, you get it here. You have to wait, but they condense it down and it's so much death so fast and so furious that when it finally ends, it's just that it's destroying my bloodshed boner, okay? <laughs> uh she walks around, the, the entire slums burnt down, but she finds the doctor. He's alive and he has a letter. Um, so then we cut to the main bad guy and the emperor. They're all dressed in nines and they're getting ready to pay, re do some ceremony for fallen soldiers and stuff like that. Very happy that everyone's dead. Uh, Emperor's like, yeah, that document has to be burned up by now. And as they're walking up the steps, they see the doctor holding the sword, staring him down. And then Yuki joins him. Well, the one-armed man's standing behind them, and he gets ready to fight them. And Yuki dispatches him rather easily by cutting off his other fucking arm, so he can go get fucked himself. You missed and the, you missed the opportunity just by saying that Yuki quickly disarms him. <laughs> oh, fuck! <laughs> Well done. <laughs> well played. <laughs> You're right. Totally miss that. With a single blow, Yuki quickly yeah. disarms him. Yeah, yeah, disarms him. I mean, he has one side. He thinks that's going to take... That dude is way overconfident about his abilities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not so much anymore, though, I bet. No, 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 no. The <laughs> screaming and the bleeding was enough to finish him off. He's okay now. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's learned a valuable lesson today, Matt. <laughs> about not being a dumb bitch. <laughs> That Too many not, won't be that, able to put that into practice. That not so much, but more along the lines of one sigh is not going to take on a sword effectively, as I thought it was. Yeah. So uh, after that, um, then uh, the, we get a bigger fight scene. Uh, the the main bad guy is using a lot of cops as human shields when he tries to shoot at, uh, at him. They kill a bunch of cops. Uh, then the Doc and Yuki together kill the Emperor. And then uh, the main bad guy shoots Yuki a couple times. Then the Doc makes himself a human shield, bum rushes him. Again, somebody bum rushes a guy uh, with a gun for Yuki. Um, stabs the bad guy, falls down. Uh, bad guy still alive, tries to point the gun at Yuki, but it clicks. He's out of bullets, so Yuki kills him. As she walks, the doctor asks her to finish him, so she does at his request she kneels down by his body oh the carnage roll credit all 
All right. So when she actually dispatches him, we need to talk about this. She puts it right in his liver. She tries to give him as quick and painless a death as possible. And you see the bile and things that just come, the fluid from that, that just comes leaking out. And it is really disgusting when you realize what that actually is. Yeah. 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 Oof. But it does give him a rather quick death. And he does. Yes. He does die. It looks like much more painlessly than what was going to happen. Well, I mean, he was fucking bleeding out with gunshot wounds and the fucking plague. So, yeah, I'm assuming this is probably better. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a mercy that she's giving. Uh, do you think Lady Snowblood is going to make it out of this one, Matt? I think she will. We never get a movie that I know of, though. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> too bad i think she would have though if there was another there's a part three i could see it now the actual lady snowblood book i believe has been adapted a couple of different times a couple of different people have taken shots at it um you can do your own research on the internet on that i just know that that's a thing that has happened although i do not know that there is a third in the series i believe this is it but i like to believe that she knelt there out of respect for him and she did. went on to be a nurse trying to help people in the plague and that she has a natural immunity from all of that hate <laughs> can i tell you what i think she dies i know she dies <laughs> i'm just fucking no. around no no she didn't die she stood up she dusted herself off she looked and said there's a whole lot more country for me to fuck up and she just went walking <laughs> just murdered everything in her path i don't know if she's murdering everything in her path but i'm sure that she's killing things she's, murdering, that uh, she's murdering government in their path you know how Cain walked the earth? Well, she's just walking Japan, killing people who need to be killed. All right, I'd pay to watch that series. Me, we're, okay, where Dr. Sam Puckett put things right where they once went wrong, she went and killed people who once went living. <laughs> that did wrong. That did wrong, yeah. She killed people who did wrong. And you're right, I would watch that fucking TV show Fuck it all day long. I fucking, I binge that shit. Do you have any more thoughts about Lady Snowblood love song of vengeance? I mean, everything that we discussed is pretty much all the the points that we were making, or at least for me, all the stuff that yeah, I saw I'm- that it reminded me of. That was the big thing that I needed to say. Um, it, it tells its story exactly as you described it. It's shot fucking gorgeously. It's yeah. an excellent fucking movie. I'm just saying, if you were going to see the Lady Snowblood film and this sequel came out, it goes into more of a social commentary direction than what your ordinary action fanatic would probably want. But if you're watching it just for the pure cinema of it, you still have the shots. Everything's still gorgeous. And there is still violence there. You just have to really fucking wait. Yeah, that's true. But I still fucking love this movie. I still think it's gorgeous. But it was it a, is a great movie. It was a serious downer to watch, seeing that nothing has changed in 2021 from when this film took place. Yeah, that's that's still pretty hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that that people are still just shit. You know what the Lady Snowblood films are missing for me though, Matt? What's that? Grotesque amounts of nudity. <laughs> Yeah, I I can see that. You need you need that you need that nudity. Well, like if I told you you could see a samurai films, you know, samurai movie. Yeah. Where the female protagonist used nudity to distract her opponents effectively and slaughtered them and got covered in blood. Would you be interested in that? I'm listening. I'm listening. That's next week. That's Sex and Fury. Is that next week? Yeah. Oh, Sex and Fury? Yeah. And uh, just curious, would you like to change the film that we have scheduled and delay it ever so slightly just after Sex and Fury so that you can see the sequel to Sex and Fury so we cover all four of the existing films out there? Because I think there's only two in this series for Sex and Fury as there are with Lady Snowblood. Well, I don't see why we wouldn't. (laughs) All right, we're going to change the schedule. I didn't want to move that movie because when you look at the list, you're going to feel bad about it. Oh. Uh, but the audience won't know and it won't matter. But we'll still watch it. I mean, we're still going to see it. Yeah, we're it's, still gonna it's cover it. just going to get moved to next year, though. Next year? Oh. Yeah. oh. So we got we're the... not even going to do it the week after. No, because we're coming up on episode 300, my man. We are on 297. We're three episodes away from the full franchise fest. Fuck it. Here's the fucking break. Are you having trouble keeping up with the ebbs and flows of modern geekery? Is the real world holding you back from knowing what is happening in the geeky world? To answer these and other personal problems brought in by your friends, gaming group, and loved ones, Geek Radio Daily presents daily informational sessions brought to you by the wonderful Billy Flynn, the Flynnstress, and podcasting's Rich Siegfried. They contain such helpful segments as history, geek birthdays, box office results, the latest in DVD and Blu-ray, video game and comic releases. Why, they also have a Sweekly show hosted by the wonderful Billy Flynn and the Flynnstress, 
which includes interviews and commentary. And to make sure you are informed, Geek Radio Daily also provides you with your daily dose of geek news to make sure you know more than that jerk know-it-all Steve. Visit us at geekradiodaily.com. That's right, Geek Radio Daily. All the geek without the weight. Now available in fine Corinthian leather. Sounds like kind of the music that I put together for like our year three or year four theme. I think it's year four. It's the one that F13 did the sleazeball announcer style uh, voice from, uh, you know, like the the real kind of gritty grindhouse trailers. You know? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I put that like real like driving beat where I truly really tried to make it sound like like a roughy kind of soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what it reminded me of. So the the musician that so willingly put that up online for us, this very trance-like, very very peaceful music that that's playing, uh, put in all of this work to have a guy describe it as the kind of thing that would be played over <laughs> real <laughs> roughy porno, real Brian Halsey type of fucking porno, real real roughy kind of porno. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel bad about that decision that I just. Do made you know to what that, that music sounded like to me? It sounded like um like uh all the Skinamax fucking softcore porn detective movies when the guy's like investigating something that too sure and again yeah. i'm sure that this artist is very grateful for that um and i, I once again want to thank Big papa <laughs> bo for allowing us to have this awful discussion about this person's beautiful music that we're totally ruining sorry. the good name of so, uh, sorry everyone <laughs> and everyone who's been subscribing to the legion patreon ad you have actually helped pay for making this music available for us and we also are now donating as well as a show yes. both of us both matt and myself are now kicking in we are turning the legion podcast network into the socialist utopia that we've utopia always wanted. that we always dreamed it could be we're starting with podcasting we'll see what happens from there yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there you go <laughs> <laughs> but let's stop talking all of that geopolitical horse shit and let's start talking some sorry I found this story. That's right. It's me. I it's did all me. this. I did this. I fuck found you, all this. No, fuck fuck, you, fuck all you. I did this. This is me now. It's my fuck time. Any Mary. Marriage equality. Australian man pushing to decriminalize consensual incest in sixty countries. Of course you're gonna pick this one. Well mm, what else do you want me to read about? A metal ride shoved up my rectum. You want me to do the new story about the buildup of Russian troops in uh, uh, eastern Ukraine? Cause I can do that too. We, All right. Did you did you check the group? Cause uh in other horse sex news. There's actually horse sex news in that. Is there horse sex news too? I didn't see it. 
It's uh, in there somewhere. Uh, I did. I tagged well, your name on it. So if you read this one and then find that, we'll do this. We got plenty of time. Yeah. All right. Consensual incest advocates are rooting for an anonymous New York parent who wants to marry their own adult child. Holy fuck. Oh my God. <laughs> just fucking incest already. Australian Richard Morris, who is pushing to change incest laws in about 60 countries, said he supports the legal push in Manhattan federal court that such behavior between consenting adults should not be criminalized. We're just trying to prolong the amount of time that happens before we watch this brother and sister fuck. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. That's all this is. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, it is. So, he and other advocates have launched about 130 petitions, mostly on change.org, seeking to change incest laws around the world. Most have received little support. I yeah, have no a raging shit. erection. <laughs> Did you really had to go that one? Thanks. We <laughs> haven't moved any mountains yet, he told New York Post. Mr. Morris was inspired to fight for those in consenting and sensual relationships, he said. After learning about a Scottish case in which a long-separated father and daughter were reunited, started an affair, and were then criminally convicted. That's yeah. my fetish. <laughs> oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be that kind of night. I'm, I'm timing him really well. <laughs> you really have. Uh, oh God! <laughs> I don't want to read this. Uh, fighting for true marriage equality is the right thing to do, isn't it? Mister Morris said. Thanks God, that was about everything in there. <laughs> I thought that was going to be worse. It seems to be as unjust as the law that used to imprison gay people and the law that used to stop people from different races marrying, he added. Which it's not. It's so not. It's very much not. Because it's super hot, you should be able to fuck one time. I knew that was going to bite me right in the fucking ass. Right there. That's fucking shit. Fuck, that serves me right for stealing a David Tell joke. Because I'm sorry. Because it's super hot, you should be able to fuck one time. <sighs> Oh my Keith god, Pullman. just fucking incest already. <laughs> We're just trying to prolong the amount of time that happens before we watch this brother and sister fuck. Yeah, yeah, that's all this is. Keith Pullman, who runs the blog Full Marriage Equality, also cheered on the New York lawsuit. Man, the amount of people are giving out their names for this. He states that it's absurd to say that an adult can't consent to marry their parent. That same adult can be sent to war, take on six or seven figures of debt, operate heavy machinery, be sentenced to death by a federal court, and consent to sex with five strangers. Because it's and marriage hot, with be one of them. One time. But can't consent to marry someone they love, he told the New York Post. Wow. Uh, in some of these cases, the genetic parent didn't raise them. And they met for the first time two years ago. Allegations of grooming are laughable attempts to deny someone their rights, even though it will have no impact on the person objecting. Jesus Christ, man. That's, um... This is like traces really of death fucked to porno. I'll say one thing. The people did this article at News.com uh, Australia. They did a really good job. Uh, they uh, and put down a whole bunch of numbers to sexual assault and domestic abuse counseling services. So, because that's, that's all that is, is sexual assault, folks. Just trying to legalize it. That's all that is. Court, any thoughts? <laughs> I don't know. All right. Uh-oh. Okay. Are you about to play devil's advocate in the worst fucking way possible? <laughs> All right, so at one point in time, Mackenzie Phillips had stated that she had entered in her adult life a sexual relationship with her father. It was one of her selling points for her book. And the story that she tells does not make me think that your blanket statement that it's always assault can be the case. Because the way that she tells that story, it most certainly does not seem that way. Even though it feels completely wrong and abhorrent to me personally for me to engage in such a thing, I cannot state that it is wrong for two consenting adults to engage in something like that so long as it doesn't result in deformed <laughs> babies from it like that kind of incest like well i'll be the next step <laughs> Well, having the children, like, from that relationship, there's going to be something that could be a hardship for them. Genetically speaking, that is absolutely possible. That's what inbreeding is all about. That's what we've talked about. But if it is just a relationship and it doesn't result in children, I can't say what's right or wrong, so long as they are both 100% actual consenting adults in this case. That's their choice. I may not like it, but what the fuck do you think freedom means, Matt? I don't think it means 
Well, that's going to be a clip. I don't think it means you should be able to fuck your children. That, I don't think it means that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all you're seeing. Like, they're actually talking about a full-fledged actual, like, marriage and relationship. Not just, yeah, I, not just, and and it's, once they're an adult, like, yeah, you'd have to really make sure there's no grooming because it seems like that's the sort of thing this guy's looking for, but maybe he's already put in the work. He just wants to make it legal. But if they've only met two years ago, then why do they want to enter into a relationship like that? Like, there's a bunch of different dynamics that I don't personally understand, but that doesn't mean I'm going to tell them they can't do it because that's not my fucking right. Oh, I don't know, man. I think it is. I think it is your right. And it's my right. It's decency's right. <laughs> Look, man, weirder shit happens with people. And as long as they're not actually hurting anybody else, I don't care. I really don't. And as long as it's a consensual thing and it's 100% legitimately so, I have no idea how to make sure that it is. And would erring on the side of caution be better? Sure. But they're also, if they're 100% adults, I'm not going to tell them what they can and can't do. <sighs> Agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about we agree on that one news story that uh, somebody yeah. else posted? Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's about Ken. it's about time. Our boy Ken in Rhode Island dropped this for us. In in other other horse sex news. news. Yes. Man charged for having sex with horses. This horse sex is a thing. It is, and it's still a thing. Out of San Antonio. San Antonio police have uh, arrested a man for bestiality with two horses inside an area horse bar. How do you fuck two horses? He had a menage a trois with two horses. This guy is like a stud. In other horse sex news. <laughs> but like in a really fucking bad way. Yeah. And I'm going to, to the fuck it to report, death. The, 24, uh, the suspect, 24-year-old Gene Bugama, was caught on surveillance cameras in June 2020 walking through the stables naked. He's then seen going into different stalls. Mostly because I have put my penis inside of you bareback. The next morning, the owner noticed two of his horses both suffered leg injuries. A veterinarian determined that both had also been sexually and physically assaulted. DNA was collected from one of the horses. It's micro penis time. Holy Jesus. A similar incident happened on January 7th with two horses injured and one the victim uh, one the victim of bestiality. America is a bunch of cunts. On February 14th inside the stables, Bowman was arrested. DNA collected from him did match that of the sample from a horse, according to police reports. So this is the second time this guy went in. I thought this story seemed familiar. We read a story for, about this guy, but they hadn't caught him yet. Yeah, ages and ages ago. This is follow-up side news. Ages as well. so we read this story and but they had not caught the person yet so now they finally caught him yeah the fucker came back and this time they caught yeah, him but it did it again yeah but didn't they catch him in the act this time is that what you're reading no they didn't catch him in the act this time they had cameras set up oh so they saw him and then were able to yes. trace him down okay yeah yeah well yeah, technically yeah. he was caught in the act then because he was caught on video right? that's true he was caught in the act yeah no you're right the owner and police did catch him inside the stables so yeah they caught him in the act literally in the act this time so yeah because i remember reading this story but it, they hadn't caught him yet so he came back to do it again. He came back to rape more horses. Well, thank the great God Atheismo that we were still on the air to be able to bring yeah. this breaking news to you folks at home that have been closer. waiting forever. In other horse sex news. This horse sex is a thing. It we, is a thing. And the man who was perpetrating this has now been caught. Yes. What a fucking wow. brazen asshole. Jesus Christ. Well, clearly this is some sort of compulsion or addiction he can't control. Well, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. He's 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 got problems. He's, he's probably got a been lot of problems. he's probably been back quite a few times and they finally installed cameras and taken enough samples and they're just done with this guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're they are over with this guy. They are putting this guy in a hospital for a long, long time, I would assume. <laughs> well, or at least he's getting a restraining order and a bunch of other shit. Yeah, I'm well I think you gotta figure it out. <laughs> what what's uh what's causing this? <laughs> I mean, I think mandatory psych evaluation is probably going to be necessary to find out why this guy has a compulsion to fuck horses. Yes, but that's also your recommendation for the slightest infractions. I believe everyone should have some sort of... <laughs> <laughs> some sort of therapy session for everything they do. <laughs> Saying is the story over, or are we just padding out the episode? No, the, the story's over. Yeah, that's it. Ah, uh, fuck it. We seem to be running around the same time every week. I'm not gonna fight it. Uh, the shorter episodes, the better. Maybe that'll save us from all the more unsubscribes. Except for our man Robert, who will always be here. Robert will always be here, even no matter what we say about about how bad uh, Tarantino is <laughs> and how good Nolan is. Oh, so. 
If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. stuck on that one again you know i'm not i'm not i'm not, I'm not trying to pat out the episode or anything like that i wouldn't i wouldn't do that not at all you wouldn't, do, you wouldn't do that you have integrity <laughs> i am not so concerned with run times because run times are a figment of our imagination in podcasts the episodes last as long as i say they do that's right they don't even exist <laughs> time's and, all relative <laughs> we don't talk about how long we can go we just talk about how we are consecutively going to always be showing up for you here at cinema psyops that's right <laughs> we've been doing whether it whether it's like... an hour and a half or whether it's just 45 minutes you'll still leave disappointed <laughs> <laughs> will we talk for three and a half hours about mad max and have another episode that's nothing but outtakes where we talked even longer on a friday night sure yeah. that's a sure. thing will we only that's talk about happen. will we only talk about like Lady Snowblood one and two for about an hour a piece. Yeah, because that kind of happened. We can't help it. That's just it's a it, running times are a figment of all of our imaginations anyway. They're just this is just how long it took us to do it, right, Matt? Exactly. That's right. That's just how it all fucking happens. So I now challenge you to go back and find the longest runtime of the entirety of this podcast. Legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops. You have 296 previous episodes that you gotta go through, and you have to find the longest running time. Yes, the longest one, and then let us know what it is. And you also have to listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> and there'll be a test. <laughs> Not that we're ever going to check up on any of you. You're doing this all on your own merit, folks. Yeah, this is, this is, I mean, listen, don't bother us with this shit, all right? <laughs>
Are you in our Facebook group and do you give a shit about any of this kind of stuff? Do you guys ever do any of these kinds of challenges or weird shit that we ask? If so, let us know in the Facebook group or I'm available there as Court Psyop, so you can message me there. Uh, Matt is also available there as Matt Psyop, and by available, I mean he checks it right before doing the show. Right before? Dude, <laughs> I do not. It's during. during. Yeah. So he's checking it while he should <laughs> be doing his Don't step all notes. over the punchline, Court. Your punchlines belong to me, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I can edit any joke of yours I like and make it sound like it's mine. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> In really this weird, realm, dude. I am the fucking game master, and every potion you drink that saves your life, I mixed. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know, but you can email feedback to Matt and give him some condolences for enduring such abuse. Psyopmatt at gmail.com. You can also That's email right. feedback to court, cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. Let him know that stealing bits from the Dell Dell wives is actually a lot cooler than you thought it would sound. Yeah, all right. You can also tweet a couple of tweets to a couple of twats on the hornbot filled gloriousness that is now my Twitter. I don't know about yours, yeah. and I'll follow what you're going to follow, I guess. I'm at yeah. court underscore psyop there, and he is at psyop matt, and currently masturbating to your OnlyFans ads. Woohoo! Speaking of OnlyFans ads, you can also find us on yeah. Instagram. I am cinema underscore psyops there, and by me, I mean I run that. Uh, that is the meme repository of all things cinema psyops. Yeah, all right. Where you, where you get all the memes, the fresh memes, and, and alternative models. <laughs> or just Insta models. I, whatever. Or Insta models, too. Whatever type of models they are. I don't know what it is. There are photos that people would really like you to look at there, so could you give them a couple of hearts? Because it's literally going to brighten their day just a little bit. Yeah, it would be nice. Well, while you're out there liking photos, kick the fuck out of this weekend and make it your bit. <laughs> Good, I can hear you. You can hear me, I'm hoping. I can hear you. All right, can you hear this? Yeah, 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 yeah. I sure can. And one, two, three. Okay, can you hear this? Fuck you, Matt. Fuck you, Matt. Yeah, I can hear that. Fuck Matt. Fuck Matt. Yeah? Yeah, 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 I hear it. Yeah? Yeah, I hear it. What about this one? Hang on. Watching ladies cut dudes into shreds is a thing I'm into. <laughs> yes, I can hear that. <laughs> that sounds like it might be just a little too loud. Let me dial that back just ever so slightly. Yeah, actually, that is a little too loud. So I'm going to let's try this again. Right. Watching ladies cut dudes into shreds is a thing I'm into. That Yeah, that sounds better. <laughs> also sounds like something that I would definitely be into. It's just that it's destroying yeah, my well, bloodshed like boner. You're okay? definitely into. It's just that it's destroying what? my bloodshed boner. Okay. <laughs> Nice. Love it. And then right off the back of that one, sorry, I have to adjust all the volumes for these. Your bloodshed boner lasts more than four hours. See it done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is true. That's proprietism right there. And then showing Matt making money from his sex work once again. I rented out my womb. <laughs> I figured that was going to get me. <laughs> well, I was going to do the whole thing where like how I got a son out of it or whatever or that other part of the clip was. But then you gave me some yeah. other gold later on that was perfect. How many like fucking dead kid fucking clips do we have? <laughs> you know what? That's a valid question, though. <laughs>
I felt so to the point where I felt it needed to be repeatable. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Just in case you were stressed out from the work call because you were running late and everything. I wanted to make you laugh and fuck around a little bit so that we're going to have yes. a good time on this one. Because it, it deserves yeah. for us to be in a good mood. So It does deserve. I, I, I'm fine. It's just fucking a weird time at work right now. Yeah, no, I totally get it, man. I just wanted to fuck around and have a little fun. So, And you're definitely recording. Sweet. Your waveform, your waveform yep. looks good. We're good to go. Everything. I'm on the snowball. All right. So let's fucking do this. 297. Wow. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's a lot of math. <laughs> yeah, well, just do this math. It's three away from 300 weeks God, straight. That, we've, we've said fuck a lot. <laughs> like a lot, a lot. Like a lot, a lot. <laughs> So, fucking, now we just lost my place. <laughs> and the rest of the listeners. Robert's still here. What's up, Robert? Robert, what's up, Robert? So, uh, the next day, those two, the anarchist and Yuki, are going for a meeting. And they uh, are stopped. And, well, the, the anarchist gives Yuki the document and says, if anything happens to him, give it to his brother. Uh, or give it to a doctor. So I just ruined it. Hold on. Cut that out. Uh, All right, back up. To, yeah, back up to where yeah. you need to start over again. All right. People. You go ahead and pour that out and I'll talk. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't know it was going to be that loud. It's making me have to go to the bathroom. It's so fucking loud. I know, right? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Never knows how loud something is to you trying to pour it quietly. <laughs> I think that's just the general rule of thumb for everything. You never know how fucking loud it is until, you know. No, man. Um, it's like just when you're trying to jack off. Go ahead. And it's so much death so fast and so furious that when it finally ends, it's just that it's destroying my bloodshed boner, okay? <laughs> why is it why is it that a fucking film series? <laughs> so dead, so furious. <laughs> Oh, great. Um, I bet you Asylum has already made like seven films. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, that was quick. Uh, <laughs> why? How'd they know? Um, they're just that good, Matt. They're just, they're that, just good. that good. At the Mockbuster. Like, Fuck, gotta make that. Um, I so, can't fault them uh, for being that good at it. I really can't. <laughs> you almost, you almost got to appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I don't have to like the movies, but goddamn, I can appreciate the fucking hustle. That's right. <laughs> Way to hustle, making shit. <laughs> One sigh is not going to take on a sword effectively, as I thought it was. Yeah, yeah, no, you're, you're not Raphael, all right? Just, just settle it down over there with your <laughs> fucking sigh. <laughs> you are not Teenage Mutant, nor are you Turtle. No, nope. You you are not a turtle in a half shell. <laughs> hero in a half shell is turtle power. Hero in a half shell. I'm sorry. You're not hero in a half shell. You have no turtle power. story really bit me on the ass <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're just lucky that soapbox held you you're you're working yeah, right you're, you're working out it's clearly made you a little bit yeah. more trim that the soapbox is holding you again it did it did get too crickety on me <laughs> you were up there a long time dude i was all right i'm sorry <laughs> at least i didn't go crazy during the fucking actual review <laughs> I bit my tongue on most of that one. <laughs> I was baiting you real bad, too. You were, too, asshole. <laughs> it is what it is. Are you still recording? I am not, not anymore.